Hi YouTube, Carl here, and I'm going to show you my motorcycle, which is a 2014 Suzuki GD110HU. Now I'm going to talk about why I made the purchase, the design inspiration, and the parts that I've installed in it. Okay, so without further ado, here it is. Just kidding, that's my dad's uh, Korak 110 by Rusi. Okay, regarding the purchase, now what made me go for this bike instead of the other options that I have in the market is the pricing. Now, I got this bike last year and it is only being offered for about 47 to 500 pesos. So, uh, it's not that pricey for a project bike. And also the uh, design feel to it, it kind of does have the 80s vibe, kind of resembles the uh, Suzuki Bandit. Now what made me say that is the uh, tail end here. Okay, another good thing about this bike is the tech inside of it. Now other bikes in the market or other commuter bikes are still using the OHV or the uh, push rod. Now this bike is already using the SOHC which is a single overhead cam and under another uh, good thing about this bike is this device it is what you called pair it's an acronym i forgot the uh, full name now what this device does is that it injects fresh oxygen in the uh, combustion chamber i think wherein the unburned gases or unburnt gases are actually um burn for a much cleaner emission okay and um the on the uh downside though this bike did not come with an electric start or electric starter it's still an old kickstart uh Looking on the bright side, it still kind of does resemble the old classic um, bike designs. And also, uh, what made me uh, went through with this design is that uh, before I made the purchase, I actually did a little research on it. And I found out that there's a huge following uh, about this bike or on this bike in Thailand where in the design itself has a uh, very good flexibility to it I actually saw this converted into uh, scramblers into cafe racers brats trackers bobbers and such so very much it does have the flexibility in terms of the uh, of the uh, project bike culture okay so um, with uh, with the design itself I went through with the uh, scrambler slash dirt tracker I kind of dig the uh, the purpose wherein you can use it on the pavement and you can go off-road so it's a go anywhere bike it does have its limitation though because of the uh, low ride uh, height to it but all in all it does serve its purpose okay so um, with the uh, parts that I've installed first things first is that I have made use of a low-rise handlebar uh, which I got from an FZ 16 by Yamaha now uh, with this conversion, you have to replace the original uh, clutch cable and the brake cable because the old one doesn't uh, really reach the uh, the uh, end part. Okay, another thing it, with the second purchase I made to it is this tires. Actually, this is an OKK Cobra Dual Sport. Specs would be 110 90 by 17. Now it's still the same rim size. I just uh, replaced the uh, old steel rims into a U type uh, alloy wheels by Comstar. See, 
it does have its shape for a more donut look. I've also replaced this one into a stainless. So it's a much uh, cleaner look and it's much easier to clean. Now with this Tars, it's actually a dual sport. Like I said, it performs 50-50 on pavement and off-road. Okay. Uh, third purchase is uh, this one, the mesh type headlight with the uh, barrel grip. And this one, the uh, it's an old uh, circle but shorter uh, side mirror. Kind of resembles the TMX125 stock, but this one's uh, much shorter. And also the fork gators here. Without this one, this bike kind of looks a little thin if you're looking at um, up front. So uh, I got this, uh, this grip here, this headlight here, this skaters here from Infinity Model Zone. You can find him online. Uh, for this one, I actually did or installed a yellow film. So I doubled it. It is really uh, quite helpful or useful when you're going up the mountains. Uh, fog because if you're using a white light actually it does not really penetrate the, the fog and what I did is that I replaced the old bulb into a 6 LED uh, I converted it to uh, an LED bulb and directed it to the battery uh, I did not uh, do the wirings, but uh, another shop did it. I'm not really good with the wirings though. Now, um, other things that I installed is this one, the uh, the rear shock absorbers. This shock absorber actually did came from a Rusi Classic 250, and uh, I dig the design here. It really goes well with the uh, with the brown concept or with uh, with the uh, a brown tone it's a uh, quite stiffer than the uh, original shocks that I have and but if you're going off-road uh, the original shocks are a much uh, better option this one I only went through with the uh, aesthetic looks to it but all in all uh, for the shocks it's really quite good also, uh, what else did I change? Ah, this one. The signal, it's a hood type bullet uh, signal lights here. I ordered this in Lazada together with this speedo gauge here. Now this speedo gauge comes with a headlight indicator, a flash indicator, and also the gear shift indicator. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now this indicator is actually um, quite useful if your bike originally has a gear indicator to it. It's a good option. I got this for about 900 plus pesos and for this one it's around uh, 1,100 I think. Plus you can add the, uh, oh no, it does not come with the uh, shipping fee. Okay, what else? Um, um, okay, now uh, this one. Uh, it's a uh, custom made um, front fender. Kind of resembles the uh, classic. Uh, Front fender designs from classic bikes. Now, I had this made as an overlapping bracket, and as uh, from the old TMX uh, front fender, I actually uh, uh, had it cut and then welded back together for the front and the end part for a much shorter look. Now, these are actually not uh, bolts, but these are actually nuts. 
okay, I had it painted by my uncle. Uh, it's a triple black, I think, uh, by Anzal. Okay, so it does really provide you with the, uh, right, it does give the uh, classic, classic look. Okay, I did not replace the uh, exhaust system yet. Still 90%. Uh, and I think the last purchase I made is the, uh, or the last mod I made is with this one, the uh, the seat. Now this the seat was made by RJ Indico from Kaintaru Zal, and I had him copy the, uh, if I'm correct, the um, the BMW seat. I don't know which one, which model, but pretty much he did a really perfect job. With this, uh, with this seat, it does look like uh, a cafe racer seat, but um, pretty much it really did fit the bike well with the uh, with the tail end here. I still have a stock or reserve seat. Um, on this bike because uh, this one I had it online I bought it uh, for a second hand and I had this one customized instead and I reserved the original seat for, uh, for a different um, sign okay so um, I think we're almost done with the uh, with the introduction Oh, you can say still say this is an introduction though, but I guess uh, that's it. The bike is still under uh, ninety percent. I'm still planning on had it repainted black still, but uh, a different uh, code, probably a uh, triple black. So uh, I did not went with the uh, full customization because uh, the original plan was to cut this part here but I've changed my mind as the project is uh, undergoing the uh, the changes I kind of fell in love with the uh, original design so I just uh, went through with the minimalistic uh, design to it so there you go it's my Suzuki GD 110 HU I name it in die after my girlfriend <laughs> okay so um, there you go folks uh, one last 360 degree look of my bike pretty much the engine is all stock I did not change the sprocket size it's basically all stock aside from the parts that I've installed though so there you go thank you for watching guys till next time